Okay, everybody. Uh, welcome today. We're going to go through some four foot uh, imaging. And then we have uh, Geocart gave us a limb and some hardware today. Uh, so we're going to do some four foot procedures after that. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Let me get rid of this. Dr. Pratt is going to be on the chat. I'm going to try to have some of this here so it stays with the video. Um, but is there anybody out there who wants to take a shot at this first x-ray? All right. I know last time we did a lot of chat room typing, but a okay. big point of this is verbalizing. So you're not going to be made fun of. You're not going to be wrong here. We're going to help get you practicing. So Dr. Pratt can run all the chat room, but we would like somebody to verbalize. I think Deanna started talking there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can try it. Okay. What do you see? Um, AP view of the right foot. Um, I would say that there's definitely something with the second toe, probably hammering of the second digit. So you're correct. Be confident in what you're saying. Okay. Hammering of the second digit. Good. Um, the metatarsal heads look slightly osteopenic, especially two through four. We'll focus on what the big problem is. Okay. The big problem is the hammering of the second toe. Okay. Now, how else can you describe that? Um, I could say like, it's like extended at the proximal interphalangeal joint and then flexed at the distal interphalangeal joint. Okay, so it definitely is flexed at the DIPJ, but look at the MPJ. If I draw here, so the PIPJ is here. Uh, my pen went away. Here's the P, well, let me restart that. I know this is a harder one to start off with, um, but here's the PIPJ. That, that looks fairly rectus. What's, where is it contracted back this way? What's that? Your metatarsal phalangeal joint? Yeah, so you can see there's a dorsal contracture at the MPJ and a plantar contracture at the DIPJ. Okay. What else is important to say? What do you uh, see that happened before or what's significantly wrong with this patient? Mm, like back towards the, are you talking about like at the joint? At the PIPJ. Dr. Pratt's chiming in with saying, why would that toe be that short? Mm. That bone looks abnormal, right? Yeah. So how do you describe it? Just being like short. A fracture. Um. If it was a fracture, how would you describe the fracture piece? Let me see, I'm having trouble seeing the actual, let me see. I'll draw. There's a lot of there's a lot of different lines I'm seeing through this. I would say this looks like a transverse fracture across, but so it's actually not a fracture. They had a procedure done previously. What do you think they had done? Probably a, yeah. Yeah. Somebody just whispered in the background, arthroplasty. Arthroplasty. Okay. Good. So they had an arthroplasty performed, and now they have this contracture at multiple joints, right? Yeah, can I ask a question though? Absolutely. How do you know it's an arthroplasty? Because we see, so the patient didn't know what they had done. They said they had surgery a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And we see only part of the bone. I'm gonna draw a line here. See where the joint is? Yes. All the other phalang proximal phalanges are very distal at their PIP. And this is just missing part of it. Right. 
so what happens when you cut bone? What does bone tend to do? When you cut bone, what does it tend to do? Yes. Um, what will the bone do at the amputation site? I see somebody mentioning it fuse it with adjacent bone. So what do we call it when there's extra bone growth? Hypertrophic callus formation? Yeah. Hypertrophic ossification, so it's growing out there. That's why it kind of looks like there's a little fake proximal phalanx head here. Okay. If it was longer and you thought there was a fracture, you could say the fracture had impaction of the proximal phalanx head. Okay. Okay. So now you have this deformed toe. Any ideas how to fix it? Mm. That's a Could hard you, question. I know. Could you maybe put a uh, could you like put a pin or like a K wire in? Yeah, so you could, what procedure would you call that? What do we use the K-wires for? Temporary fixation. Yeah, but what about on a toe? Um, we use it to achieve. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know the name for it. I just thought you would just, I thought it was just called like, you just, I mean, I probably do know the name. I just you can't. You know the name, yeah. It. We see in the chat room, arthrodesis. Oh, okay. You want to fuse it straight, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to pass this question off to somebody else. Okay. Who can step in there? So if you're going to do this, you have to release a bunch of contractures. So does anybody else know the name of the test that we use to uh, evaluate the hammer toe throughout the process? Of, okay. I see Kaliki in there. Who's talking about cereal? Um, so if we're doing the clicking and push-up test, we do that as part of a sequential release. So does anybody out there want to talk through doing a sequential release? I have an order that I was taught, but I'm not, I feel like it can vary if I can try it. It can, but as long as you get all the steps correctly. Not, it, okay. they can be a little bit mixed up in order, but as long as you get all the things to cut, that's the important part. Okay. Um, so I know at the IPJ, you want to do a uh, capsulotomy and tenotomy to kind of expose the joint. Good. So what tendon are you cutting? Uh, your EDL tendon. Okay. And then... Um, so you're going to do a EDL tenotomy and a PIPJ mm -hmm. capsulotomy. And mm -hmm. then where are you going? Uh, and then... I guess from there, if you were doing arthroplasty, you could reset proximal phalanx or some of the head of it, but. Um... Yep, so you take out some bone mm -hmm. and then you do a clicky and push up test. And if you still have a contracture, it's going to look like this on the right hand side. So then what do you go do? Uh, you can go a little more proximal to the MPJ and do another um, capsulotomy. Good. And... So we do a capsulotomy there. And then if it still is dorsiflex at the MPJ, what do you want to do? Uh, could you do, I mean, if another like eccentric tendon uh, or eccentric hood release potentially? Yeah, you'll do the hood release kind of in part of the capsulotomy. Oh, okay. Um, but then what do we do underneath? Like a, like the flexor plate um, release? Yeah, with what kind of instrument do we use? Would you use like a McGlamory? Yeah, so you get a McGlamory elevator underneath there, good. And then the last step would be if it's still contracted, what osseous procedure could you do there? Um, could you do like a distal uh, head osteotomy, like a, like a shortening procedure? Yeah, exactly. Like, so you, like a while? Be, yeah, a while. That would be good. So those are your kind of steps to walk through doing a sequential release. Um, and then you'd finish fusing the toe distally. Now what happens if you see this toe and you do everything and it's still elevated a little bit, what kind of procedure can you do in conjunction with the PIPJ uh, fusion? Uh, would you think you'd be thinking more potentially like a, like a planter plate fixation or to fix that? You could do a planter or, plate repair. Or, <laughs> tendon transfer, or okay. Somebody here, yeah. Girdle stone is when you tie them up on top, right? Mm -hmm. And if you fuse it, then that's one longer lever I'm gonna pull everything down. Okay. Okay, good. Let's go on to the next one here. Does anybody out there know what procedure this patient had done? Like a 
method let's say or um so which toe looks abnormal arthroplasty of the proximal phalanx of the girth digit good and you can see where right here on the lateral side all that is hypertrophic ossification is growing out to the side and what air, how what direction do we make our incision for a derotational arthroplasty proximal medial to distal lateral so if we did proximal medial to distal lateral go like this does that look correct no Get rid of my. The uh, acronym is DIMPLE, <laughs> distal, medial, to proximal, lateral. Okay, that works. I like to think of if you kind of draw out the sulcus too like that, it just parallels the sulcus. Because what you're going to do is, let me try to erase this here. When you are doing your derotational incision, the skin is going to rotate around this axis down the middle of it. So then the toe is going to swing around and come up like that and derotate. I don't know if that's too confusing, but dorsal, dorsal, distal, medial to plantar, proximal, lateral is the direction you want to remember. Anybody want to take on this one? I can do it. Can you hear me? Okay, um, so it looks like there was um, a prior, um, was it an arthrodesis attempt of the? Yeah, so you would say it's the IPJ of, of the right first? So yeah, an AP view of the right foot, status post know. an arthrodesis of the first um, DIPJ with You're two staples. Almost correct, and, except for is there a DIPJ on the helix? Oh, I'm sorry, PIPJ. Is there a PIPJ in the hallux? IPJ, IPJ. <laughs> okay. So if um, you can rephrase that, it's an AP view of the right foot status post hallux IPJ arthrodesis. Okay. Um, with two staples in place that appear to be, the staples appear to have no bony callus formation around them, but there's no trabeculation across the joint. Good. So you can um, there's a little loosency. No trabeculation, that works. Okay. And then, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. You, um, you there's a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of loosency noted um, around, um, around that lateral staple. Yeah, both of them have some loosency. Right okay. There, right there. There. Okay. So what's your diagnosis? What if this was like 10 months ago? Uh, I'd say a non-union. Okay, good. Any idea how to repair this or fix it? Um, probably just get more aggressive with the fixation. So go back in and, well, is it causing him pain? Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, probably go back in and try to remove the staples and maybe use a screw. Okay, what, if you're going to put a screw axially, what size screw, any idea? Isn't it, I, I think it's a 2 screw. A little bit. I've, 3 -0? So, 2 or 3 -0. The 3 to 4 range, although okay. I've seen a whole variety, but you want to try to keep it around 3 to 4 -0. What you have okay. to remember, though, is that the smaller diameter you get, the companies may not make a screw that's that long. Okay. Okay. Who wants to read this one? I can try. Okay. It does look a little blurry, so I'll, I'll help you out. I want you to focus in this area here. They had a surgery done there. So they had a PIPJ arthrodesis. Okay. How would you describe it? So we do a lot of complications because those are harder to describe, but how do you describe one that actually goes well? Mm. No non-union, no malunion. 
You're on the right track. So you can say it's an AP view of the right foot status oh. foot, second PA of the Okay. And like you said, no malunion, so it's well aligned. And you said there's no non-union, so the opposite of that is, or the opposite way of saying that is there's trabeculation across the joint or it's oh. well fused. Okay. Okay. You want to take another one or do you want to pass this along? Sure, I can take another one. Okay. <laughs> so this is the left, left foot AP view. Looks like there's hammering of the second toe. So which joint looks affected? The DIPJ. Okay. So you can say contracture of the DIPJ. <laughs> Good. How's the other overall alignment of the toe otherwise? Um, okay. Yeah, there's no deviation at the MPJ. So if you were going to do an in-office procedure, mm -hmm. this is a diabetic with an ulcer at the tip of the toe, what do you want to know clinically about their toe first? They have an ulcer or not. Okay, but what else do you want to know about the, in your musculoskeletal evaluation? Oh, if it's flexible or not. Yeah. So let's say this is flexible and you're going to do an in-office tenotomy to help straighten out the toe. Um, which tendon or tendons are you going to be cutting in at what level? Um, the FDL. Good, because the FDL goes all the way to the tip of the toe, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're, and so you're saying you're going to cut it at which joint? Uh, DIPJ. Good, right there. What tendons are you cutting if you're cutting at the PIPJ? Um, at, uh, yeah, FDB. No, no, um, PIPJ? Yeah, if you're going to make a cut at the PIPJ, do you cut one tendon or both tendons from the plantar aspect? This is just an anatomy question formed in a different way. I think it's both. It is both, correct. Okay. <laughs> it's not hard, but when you start to see some standardized exams in the future and they talk about complications or surgical procedures, a lot of questions just end up being anatomy questions, but instead of saying, instead of phrasing it as like a lower extremity, extremity anatomy question, it's a surgical question, so you just have to think a little differently. Okay. So if you do a tenotomy, what could a complication be? Overcorrection? Yeah, floating toe. So what procedure could you do to fix that? We um, mentioned it a little bit ago. Like an FDL transfer or yeah. just do cut the extensor? Yeah. So always educate to patients. If you're going to do the in-office procedure, it's to help alleviate that ulcer on the spot. And in the future, you may need to take them to surgery for a PAPJ fusion and a tendon transfer. Okay. Who wants to describe this one? I can try it. Go ahead. Um, so we have two views here, the right foot. Um, first view is an AP view, uh, where the second MPJ looks subluxed medially. Good. And then on the lateral view, it looks like there's a dorsal contracture at the level of the MPJ. Good. So you can now start to combine your reads. And instead of breaking it down like that, you can just say these are two views of the right foot with a dorsal medially contracted second toe at the MPJ. Okay. And that way you put them, you know, you're getting two views. So you're using all that information for one. What about this one? I'm um, referring to the second toe or to the uh, HAV deformity. Let's go. Which one do you think had surgery? The second toe. Okay, good. So it looks like they threw a, um, a K wire in to do an arthrodesis at okay. the level of the PIPJ. So how would you say that as your initial opening line read? Uh, status post op second uh, PIPJ arthrodesis. Yep, you can just say status post. Okay. And how does the wire look? Um, I think it looks normal. Why do you think it looks normal? Because you didn't see this patient when it was placed in surgery, but why do you think that it hasn't really moved? Um, I don't see really any uh, lucid scene, at least in the AP view. It looks like the position is correct. 
uh, across the proximal and intermediate phalanx there. And you can see the wires right at the, at the base of the proximal phalanx there. Yeah. So that's where we want to place those. So it hasn't gone in too far, it hasn't retracted back. You can also kind of tell because we bend it at the tip of the toe and the ball, the Juergens ball is touching the toe, so we know there hasn't been a big gap all the way out. Somebody mentioned here the ossification of the fifth met head. This is, what do we think this is? I'm not really sure there. Just an accessory bone. Well, they actually have two of them, it looks like. <laughs> okay, anybody want to take a shot? This is the last of the toes. I could try. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at an AP view of the right foot. Um, it's actually a lot going on here. Looks like there's, well, first of all, there's a plantar contracture. It seems that the, at the um, PIPJ of the third, uh, there's lateral deviation of both the hallux as well as the second digit. Um, there's arthritic changes at the MPJs, I'd say of at least three and two. Um, and then something's going on at the second PIPJ as well. Um, and that proximal phalanx looks, I don't know what to call it. Okay. So let's play the game of guess what procedures this patient had done. On the, did they have anything done on the first ray? I don't think so. Okay. What about the second? Um, it looks like there may have been an attempted fusion or... This was just another case of doing an arthroplasty at the second PIPJ mm. and getting all that hypertrophic ossification growing out. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the third? Um, it doesn't look like... Well, see, that's why I wasn't sure because there's... You see like kind of the bullet hole. Yeah. Um, but then at the end of the proximal phalanx like the head of the proximal phalanx looks like it was cut it does look like it was cut okay and they also did that to the fourth right mm. you can see how it's narrowed and growing out this way Not true. and then the fifth it doesn't look like they may have cut some of the proximal phalanx but they also may have removed some of the intermediate phalanx because there's not much there mm. and then what do you think happened down here the third I think that was like a fracture. What if it was done during surgery? What are two options it could be? Because I agree with you. There's definitely joint space narrowing and a regular contour to the joint with deviation laterally. But how does the overall parabola look? Um, that third looks like it's been shortened. So it could have been like a... Um, a shortening osteotomy of some sort. So it could have been a shortening osteotomy. What else could it have been? How does that metatarsal head look like, or how does that look compared to the neighboring metatarsal heads? Like there's been some, a lot of loss of bone destruction, I guess. Okay. So what's an option? If you, have a, if you have a patient with a bad painful callus, you could do a shortening osteotomy, but that would require a screw usually, and there's no hardware in there. So either hardware could have been removed or they could have done a floating osteotomy or what could you remove to offload that callus or wound? The metatarsal head? Yeah, so it could have been a met head resection. And you could have, if it looks like the met head resection was around there, that could all be hypertrophic ossification. Yeah. So without really knowing what the procedure was, you can at least kind of talk through and try to guess. Um, but this is a tough one. Good job. All right, uh, we have one uh, image for a Taylor's bunion we threw in there because I might do that procedure here in a little bit. So does anybody want to read this one? Gave away the answer. I could take this one. 
Okay. Uh, we got an AP view of the left foot. Good. And we have a uh, fifth MPJ that is deviated medially. And uh, there is some uh, hypertrophic changes uh, and the lateral aspect of the fifth metatarsal head. Okay, so you could say that there is an enlarged fifth metatarsal head. What else do we notice here that's not osseous? That's a soft tissue envelope. So I was what do you think yes. when we get these patients who have Taylor's bunions, sometimes the soft tissue envelope looks really enlarged. Uh, what could be forming in the soft tissue? I see some people in the chat room typing in. That's okay. Yeah, it could, it could be a bunion. It could be a bursa. Yeah, you could add a, have an adventitious bursa forming there. Good. So we'll review this. What are the three types of Taylor's bunions? You mentioned one, and one is an enlarged metatarsal head. Uh, well, could it be a uh, intensely medially deviated MPJ? Uh, think about in the metatarsal itself. So one is a dumbbell shape or enlarged metatarsal head, and then the other two types are more proximal. I see in the chat room here. You could have lateral bowing, or you could have an enlarged IM angle. Does anybody remember what the angle measurement would be for the lateral bowing? What do we call that one? I see lateral deviation angle, good. So you either look for an enlarged metatarsal head, you look for increased lateral devi deviation angle, or you look for an increased intermetatarsal angle. Those can help you because in theory, you could do different procedures. So what kind of procedure would you do if you just have an enlarged met head? Met head resection. Good, you can do a total met head resection or even just a partial met head resection. What if you have lateral bowing that's increased? Uh, you're going to have to do a procedure at the shaft. Okay, and what if you have an increased IM angle? You're gonna have to do a, met a metatarsal based procedure. Yeah, either base or what's something that we do that's easier for a patient to walk on? Because base procedures are hard to heal because it's a diabetic patient. So what could you do that's a procedure that's stable? Uh, I'm lead here. Yeah, the reverse Austin. Good, so I'll draw in the lateral image here. This is where the cut was made. And what type of fixation was used here? Screw fixation. And what else? Looks like a pin. Yeah, this was just a temporary pin that was placed and it ended up being in good alignment. So we just bent it and left it in for a second point of fixation. All right, we're gonna, uh, what procedure do you think this patient had? I'll take a chat room answer on this one. They had two procedures. The first one was the first MPJ fusion and the second one was Austin. Not in Austin. This is somewhat of a trick question. Not a silver. Not an Aiken. So if you have to do a first MPJ fusion, how do you fuse the joint? Good, I see hardware removal. So you can say AP and lateral view or two views of the right foot, status for first MPJ fusion and subsequent hardware removal. And we see trabeculation forming in a well-aligned joint. Contrary, uh, yes, that explains the holes. I'll show, here's one screw hole you can see up here. Contrary, we have a problem on this patient. Oh, What's going wrong with this patient? Yeah, so we have a screw backing out, I see there. Soft tissue expansion. Does the joint still look well aligned? No. No. Okay, so if you're losing correction, what do you want to do? Mm 
you'd have to take out the hardware and pretty much start over. We prep the joint. Good. And then what's your last step? Uh, try and refuse. So how would you do that? So it, you can have a standard answer. You said exactly the same thing. Hardware removal, reprep the joint, and then refuse with what? So I would try to do a more medial plate since you wouldn't want to do it on the same side as the original plate, but I don't know if that's correct. You could do it the same direction, but uh, the, when we talk about, re, uh, about refusing or taking a, a patient back for a revision for a non-union, you want to use bigger or bulkier hardware. So maybe you do two cross screws with a plate, maybe you do a longer plate, Maybe you have to add graft for this. Maybe you want to put a mini rail over to protect them, but you want to add extra hardware. And you also want to keep them off their feet longer. Okay. So we haven't done a pre-op of a first MPJ. Does anybody want to read this one? I can do it if no one else wants to. Sure. And I just want to respond back to one question real quick. Somebody asked on the last one if there was an ulcer because of the, the marker. This is actually the lesion marker because the patient only had pain at the screw head. So all they ended up having done was a removal of the screw and it ended up fusing. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Okay, so um, this is one AP view of the right foot. Um, with an increased IM angle and a laterally deviated um, proximal, or with the laterally deviated um, phalanx. And there appears to be um, a, tibial, a tibial seismic position. What? What? Um, there appears to be, um, I would say, arthritis and joint space narrowing of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Correct. So stay away from using diagnoses at first. So we have narrowing, asymmetric joint narrowing of the first MPJ with cystic formation. Okay, cystic formation is that. Uh, what is for dinner? That's the question. <laughs> so what's your diagnosis now? Um, a bunion. Or okay. helix subjective valgus. Along with what? This is a combined. Along with arthritic changes. Okay, so, well, we could have a halix what? Um, halix valgus have, and halix. Um, what if there's no motion there? Oh, halix rigidus. Good. So or limitus, depending. Both of them. Pardon? What procedure fixes both? Um... Would it have to be more proximal than an Austin? No. Oh, so, a fusion. There you go. Yeah. Does anybody Arthritis. know how much the first MPJ fusion can correct the first and second IM angle? Eight degrees? Yeah. So there's, that's what we see just from doing the fusion. Do you have any idea why? Why it corrects eight degrees? Was that to mirror the chat? Or, or just why it corrects anything in general? Why it corrects anything? Um, because when you prep the joint, you can put it into a better alignment for True. fusion. And what we also do is we also align. So the flexor and extensor hallucis longus tendon are now pulling more axially. And it's not like a bow and arrow here where they're pulling more uh, at an angle and causing that retrograde buckling forcing the metatarsal okay. head out. We'll skip through some of these here. Uh, what did this patient have done? Good, what type of arthroplasty? There we go. So when we look at an implant arthroplasty, how do we wanna describe the implant? can discuss the uh, alignment of the joint, um, make sure it's well aligned. 
So how does the joint look on the AP and the lateral? Does it look well aligned? Well aligned. Okay. And then is there any lucency surrounding the implant? No. So there's no backing out of the hardware. Good. There's not too much to describe with it. We're going to show one in a little bit here where there's a complication. Is it possible? I know because with some hardware types, they can break down. Is it possible to see that on x-ray? Yes, I will show you. I think I have one coming up. Um, this is a patient. This is a post-op of a different first MPJ procedure. What procedure do you think this patient had? This was like a 90 year old female patient who had pain uh, on first MPJ range of motion with crepitus. Go to Keller. And what can you achieve with a Keller by making it a little bit of an angled cut and trying to keep that plantar cortex intact here? What, and what attaches there? You're maintaining your sesamoids. And sesamoids and what, what muscle attaches to the sesamoids and then the proximal phalanx base. Luxor brevis. Good. So that way you can help prevent a floating toe that way because we know that's one of the complications. So if you make a little bit of an angular cut, we can try to keep those attachments there. All right, now the complication. This patient's had a lot of surgery. So you have um, two views of the left foot. There is a, um, a hemiothroplasty on the first MPJ. Good. The joint appears well aligned, um, no backing out of the hardware. Um, there are um, two screw placements. There's two screws on the, um, oh, there's a screw on the second um, IPJ and the third IPJ. Um, on the second digit, the screw is, um, so there's a hardware mal malfunction. You could say it's broken in half. Good. Um, on the third digit, this uh, joint is well opposed. Um, hardware is intact. And then there is a um, screw on the fifth metatarsal. Um, what do you think that screw was used for? Um, probably for a fracture. Good. So we have a well healed third at PIPJ, but the second, what's your diagnosis for that one? Um, non-union. Good. With broken hardware, right? So we can always talk about hardware as a diagnosis too. Because if you're going to fix that, just like Assad said before, you're going to remove the hardware, reprep, and then fuse. Or an arthroplasty, depending on their age, that might be easier just to get rid of this bone. But what have we seen so far? A lot of complications from second PIPG arthroplasties. What ends up happening? You can get um, either contractures or um, yeah. you can get further deviation of the joint. Good. And then the last thing is, so this is a hemi implant where the proximal phalanx is just broached here instead of screwing into the bone. So what's wrong with the lateral view over here with the implant? On the AP view, we see it. We want it going down the middle of the proximal phalanx, and that's good. But what about the lateral view? Um, it, it places the proximal phalanx at, at a uh, greater plantar uh, position than yeah, we want. Yeah, so pointing plantar, right? So it's about to break through the plantar cortex. If I erase the pen here, you can see the plantar cortex is right here. So it's about to break through. So either A, this was placed in a terrible position or B, it's moved over time. So what would you want to ask for if you were seeing this patient in clinic? How could you tell if that was placed that way or not? Check something done previously. Prior x-rays or... Good, yeah. And then what's wrong with the joint on the lateral? Um, the MPJ is dorsiflexed. Yep, so this, this patient now has a hallux rigidus iatrogenically, right? We have the elevated first ray, and there's clinically there's no motion there. Um, so if you have somebody who has, this patient here had an infection where they had tibial sesamoid removed. So what do you think was done on this patient?
put a mini rail on. There is a mini rail applied. Good. What else do they have done? Put a spacer or a graft. What kind do you think? Um, it's, it's radio opaque, so probably um, probably a met metallic spacer. Um, it's actually somebody in their chat rooms commenting. It's an antibiotic spacer. Okay. And when we remove bone because it's infected and put in the antibiotic spacer, what's the point of the mini rail here? To keep it at the length. Good. So it doesn't contract. And then what's your next procedure for this patient? Dr. Clardy says free fibula flap, but we're not going to answer that normally. What do you think you would do? Yeah, see some chat room bone graft. So whenever you see a complication of a first MPJ fusion, um, there's kind of a sequential process we go through. You want to make sure it's not infected. So if you think there's infection, you can get a stat gram stain in the OR or you get some imaging ahead of time, but we'd re we remove the met head and then wait until the infection's gone. And then we're gonna put a bone graft in there and do a first MPJ fusion. So where can we harvest that bone graft from? From the calcaneus, tricortical. So I'll go ahead and this is a different patient, but it was a good x-ray of, can you see where the bone graft was harvested. So in that box there, we can see that cutout where the bone was harvested. You can pack it with Cancellus chips if you want. Sometimes if we take a huge graft, like the size of my red arrow, we may put a screw across it just to help prevent a fracture. But for anybody here, we can actually look at the first MPJ and there's something wrong with the first MPJ after the fusion. Does anybody see anything wrong at the fusion site? There's no trabeculation. Okay, you can see a little line right here, right? And what happens when we see a, good, we have some comments in there, non-union. What else is going on with the hardware? The screws are backing out of the distal portion of the plate. Yeah, maybe a little bit there, or maybe we just didn't drive in as far, but we have a crack right where that arrow is. So it's, it's partially fused and we have motion still, so that plate is that plate ended up breaking because of that. So that's not good. Um, what position do we want to fuse the first MPJ in? Rectus is good. So rectus in which planes? When we talk about anybody can shout out a plane. So there's certain measure, one of these has a certain angular measurement. In the coronal plane, you want the nail to be parallel to the ground. I'll answer that one because that one's easy. In the transverse plane, how do we want the hallux to be in relation to the second toe? Yeah, we want it to be parallel to that. So ideally we get a little bit of abduction. You wanna make sure you don't fuse it perfectly straight if the second toe is deviated because then you have a big peace sign in the middle. And then what about the sagittal plane? See, there's a comment earlier in here.
slightly dorsiflex and sagittal. Yeah, you you see how the you end up wanting the toe. So you want 10 to 20, 10 to 15 degrees of dorsiflexion there. The easy way to do it is just to take a little two by two or when you're in surgery, a four by four and kind of fold it up a little bit and get the pulp of the toe off of your foot plate. Like June says, check with the foot plate and just put a little bit of, of padding underneath there. Okay, we are done with this section. Give us a few minutes. I'm gonna pause the recording here. We're gonna uh, do the Zoom uh, we're going to set up our live stream to go through this.